So I have a bit of a dilemma here. I really want to play that new Ninja Turtles game that was recently released for the Nintendo Switch. And I also want to record a YouTube video, but which one should I do first? I know, I have a coin right here and heads, I do the YouTube video and then tails, I play the game. Okay, so I guess it's time to do a YouTube video. Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, and also welcome back to my Linux Crash Course series. You know, actually, this tutorial series has officially become the longest running tutorial series in the history of this entire channel. So thank you guys so much for making the series a success. I really appreciate that. Now, if you're new to this series, what we do in this series is we go over a foundational Linux concept in each video, one video at a time, with each video, unless I let you guys know otherwise, being completely standalone, and you can watch the episodes in this series in any order. Now, normally I like to go over just one command per video, but I really don't think it's possible to go over the head command without also going over the tail command. And these two commands are basically symbiotically related. The head command will show you the first 10 lines of a file, and the tail command will do the exact opposite and show you the last 10 lines of a file. But you know, I could probably just end the video right here and go play Ninja Turtles because I think that pretty much sums up everything you need to know about the head and tail commands. But there's actually more to these commands than just that. I'm going to show you some actual examples. And by the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know to make use of the head and tail commands. But before we get into that, I wanna take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. And actually it's not just today's video, Linode is the sponsor for this entire series. They were awesome enough to sponsor the entirety of the Linux Crash Course series, and I really appreciate that. And Linode's platform gives you access to all the features you'd expect from a cloud provider nowadays, such as virtual machines, DNS, block storage, object storage, Kubernetes, and more. But compared to other cloud platforms, Linode is very affordable and is also heavily focused on Linux which makes them a great fit to sponsor this series. And not just this series, Linode is the sole provider for every publicly available resource for my entire company. And I started using Linode even before they became a sponsor. If you have yet to open up an account, well, what are you waiting for? The URL that you see on the screen right now will allow you to set up a new account with $100 in free credit, and that credit is good for up to 60 days. And by doing that, You'll also be supporting Learn Linux TV, which I'd really appreciate. But why should you open an account with Linode? Well, everything that you might want to build on a Linux server is compatible with Linode. For example, you could spin up a Nextcloud server, start a blog, Minecraft server, and, well, that's just off the top of my head. And if nothing else, you could use their service to spin up your very own Linux instance to use as a practice server while you go through the various tutorials in this series and on this channel. And I really appreciate Linode's continued sponsorship of Learn Linux TV. They're awesome, you're awesome, and this channel is awesome if I do say so myself, so I think it's a mutual fit. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the head and tail commands. So let's go ahead and see some basic usage of the head and tail commands. And the basic usage is extremely simple. So for example, with the head command, you simply type head, and then you type the path to a text file. And in my case, I'm going to use slash var slash log slash syslog. And the reason I chose that is because as a Linux administrator, you're going to be looking at log files quite often. And the syslog, at least on Debian and Ubuntu based servers, is going to be a very common file that you'll need to check. Now you could use whatever text file you want on your end, it really doesn't matter as long as you have access to it. And even if you are on Debian or Ubuntu, you might not have access to the syslog file without using sudo, you might actually get an error message. But none of that really matters because the point here is that with the head command, by default at least, we will view the first 10 lines of the file. So I'll press enter. And actually we're seeing more than 10 lines here. But the reason for that is because, well, for recording, I like to bump up the font size of my terminal that helps me ensure that you guys are able to see the content without having to squint. But as a consequence of that, some of these lines are somewhat long and they're wrapping to the next line. But actually, we legitimately have 10 lines here. And to prove that, what I'm going to do 
is pipe this into the word count command. Now, of course, the word count command is not our topic for today, but I figured I would throw this in there because it's a fun command anyway, and it's also something that you should know. So I'll just pipe it into WC, and the option that I'll use is dash L, and what dash L does is it gives you a count of the total number of lines in whatever output that you're piping into it. So I'll press enter, and as you can see here, we do indeed have 10 lines of output. So that's pretty cool. The tail command, on the other hand, is pretty much exactly the same. Well, it's the exact opposite because it's going to show us the last 10 lines, but at least the syntax for its basic usage is not really any different. You just type the command, and just like before, you give it a path, and then the file name to a text file that you want to view the last 10 lines of. Again, I'm going to use the syslog file. Now in my case, I'm actually seeing quite a bit of output here, and this is actually kind of funny because these errors are Kubernetes errors. I didn't actually expect to see this when I rehearsed for this video, but seeing this makes sense because at one point I was actually using this particular server as a demonstration for Kubernetes. And then when I was done, I, well, removed Kubernetes, but apparently it looks like I didn't fully remove it. As you can see right here, there's a lot of errors where it's trying to synchronize a pod, and that's just Kubernetes speak. But basically, I have bits and pieces of Kubernetes that are still here. I didn't fully remove it. So we see a lot of output, and it's almost impossible to know how many lines we actually have here. But just like before, we could pipe the tail command into the word count command with dash L. And sure enough, we have 10 lines. And that's not surprising. Again, by default, that's just what this command does. Now, to make this a little bit easier on my end, what I'm going to do is just make a backup copy of the syslog file. And that's probably something that you should get in the habit of anyway, because, well, we don't really want to mess with a production log file. I mean, sure, we're not actually making changes to it, but it's better to work with a copy anyway. So what I'll do is copy var log syslog, and I'll copy it locally here. And if I list the storage, you can see that I have a local copy of the system log right here. And just in case you're curious, if I was to cat out the contents of the entire syslog file, but instead of showing everything on the screen, pipe that into wc-l, we can see that I have one or two lines in this file, not too many, no, no, okay, there's 20,000 lines here, quite a few. And that's most likely because of the fact that I have a half-finished Kubernetes installation here. But what you're seeing is a day in the life of a real Linux administrator as they go about their job. You know, if a syslog file is filling up, that could be a problem. And you might want to look into log rotation or possibly even compressing files, which are definitely two topics we'll go over in this series. But let's get back to the topic at hand. What you've just seen are examples of the head command as well as the tail command, which respectively allow you to view the first 10 or the last 10 lines of a file. But what if you want to, I don't know, see more than that? So what I'll do is I'll type head, I'll just give it my local copy of the syslog file, but specifically I want to configure the number of lines that it's going to show. So I'll use dash n, and let's say, I don't know, we want to view 25 lines. So dash n allows us to clarify how many lines we actually want to see here. And when I press enter, we're going to see 25 lines, the first 25 lines of the syslog file. But these 25 lines will not fit on the screen, but you get the idea. As you can see right here, it shows us a lot of information, the first 25 lines of the file. And to prove that, we'll use word count to get a line count yet again. And sure enough, as you can see, the dash n option does exactly what you think it does. And the same thing is true for the tail command as well. Now, just like with virtually every Linux command, the head and tail commands can become even more powerful when you combine them with other commands. And here's a very contrived example. If I cut out the contents of the syslog without, you know, doing anything else, it's just going to do exactly that. Every line of the syslog is going to be printed to the terminal. And as you've seen earlier in the video, I have over 20,000 lines in this file, so if I was to just simply execute this command right here, it's going to spit out 20,000 lines of output, but that's not really what I want. 
Let's say, for example, that I want to view every line that contains the term SSH. And we've gone over the grep command in another video in this series, but basically what we're doing here is we're just using it to show us only the lines that include the term SSH. But what if I want to, I don't know, view the first 10 lines that match? Now, I might not actually have more than 10 lines here, but just to complete the example, I'm just going to pipe this into the head command. I'll press enter. And we're not quite seeing 10 lines here, which is more than likely because there weren't more than however many matches you see here in the file. We're limiting the output to any line that contains SSH. And as you can see here, we have a few lines. And more specifically, we actually have five to prove that. Well, you can see we have five. But as you can see here, with the head command and the tail command, as well as virtually every Linux command, they become more popular as you combine them together. Now, as you can see, the head and tail commands are very simple. For the most part, that's just about it. Yes, these commands do have other tricks up their sleeve, but when it comes to basic usage, that was essentially it. But we're not quite done with the tail command. The tail command actually has another option that I would like to show you, and this one is actually specific to the tail command. Up until now, we had the dash n option that allows us to configure how many lines we want to see, and that option is shared between the two commands. However, the dash f option, which is what I want to show you right now, is specific to the tail command. Now, what I'm going to do is just resituate my terminal screens right here, and then I'll come right back and I'll show you the example. All right, so now I'm back. And what I've done is I've just opened another terminal window. I resized them a bit. And also I lowered the font size as well. And the reason why I did that is because we're going to be seeing a lot of information. But what I want to do is follow a log file on the left-hand terminal while I manipulate things on the right-hand terminal. So what I'll do is type tail, and I want to follow, which is dash F, and the file that I want to follow is slash var, slash log, slash syslog. Now notice that I'm not actually following the local copy of the syslog file, and there's a very important reason for that. I want to see what's going on with the actual system log in near real time, and that's exactly what this command will allow me to do. Now straight away, the default for the tail command, even in follow mode, is going to be to show you the last 10 lines of a file, so follow mode is no different in that regard. But notice also that it didn't return me to the command prompt. I have a blinking cursor there, but I'm not able to execute another command. Now what I can do is I can hold control and press C, and that'll bring me back to the command line. But actually, I want to stay in follow mode, so that way I can show you the benefit of follow mode. Now on the right hand side, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to restart the SSH service. To do that, I'll run sudo systemctl, and then the keyword restart. And what I want to do is restart the SSH service. Now, as I press enter, watch the terminal on the left hand side. Notice that it's updating in near real time. It's actually every few seconds or so. But as you can see right here, as soon as I stopped the SSH service, we immediately saw the output of that on the left hand side. Now, let's see another example. What I'm going to do this time is tail a completely different file, and this is also specific to my distribution. You could use a different file if you'd like, but what I'm going to do is run tail-f, and I'm going to run that again slash var slash log, and then we have the auth log. This is the authorization log. Essentially, whenever we have somebody that tries to log into our server, we're going to see the attempt right here. So press enter. And I'll also press enter a bunch more times. It's a common trick that we use to add some white space or line breaks in between the output that is currently there right now. So that way we could easily differentiate the output that's new. Now on the right hand side, what I'm going to do is attempt to SSH into this machine right here. Now normally there's really no reason to SSH into the machine that you're already logged into. That's kind of redundant. But we could just assume that I'm trying to log into this particular computer from a different one to simulate, I don't know, a user that's trying to log in, and for some reason they can't. Maybe they're contacting you to help try to figure this out. 
And what you're doing is following the authorization log, asking them to go back to their desk and try it again. And while they're trying it, you'll actually see the error messages in the authorization log in near real time. So whatever their problem is or whatever their issue might be, the context or the error messages, warnings, whatever you see on the left-hand terminal, the one that you're following, that's probably going to give you some information that'll be helpful in understanding why that particular user is having a problem. So what I'll do is type SSH and then localhost, I'll press enter. And so far we see no output on the left-hand terminal because at this point, the connection hasn't been attempted yet. It's just asking me if I actually want to proceed with this particular connection, and I do. So I'll press enter, and then I'll type in the password, but what I'm going to do is just type it in incorrectly on purpose. So we're already seeing output on the left-hand side. In this case, the user, who is actually, well, me, is just simply typing their password incorrectly. So I think in this case, we understand exactly what's going wrong here. This is a very common thing. Maybe the user just insists that they're typing in the correct password. You and I both know they're really not, no matter how many times they insist that, but that doesn't really matter. We know they're having a problem with their password, so we can go ahead and reset their password. But to get back to the point, follow mode and tail is a great command that you should absolutely memorize. If you are troubleshooting a problem, any problem, it's just a good idea to follow the log file for the service app or you know whatever it is you're troubleshooting. Follow the log file for that thing and you'll get some useful information that you can use to troubleshoot that particular situation. So there you go. That was my demonstration of the head and tail commands so now you know the basics of both. And if you found this video helpful, then please click that like button to let YouTube know that you found it helpful, which in turn helps me because that helps YouTube deliver this content to more people. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your comments down below and definitely subscribe because there's going to be a ton of episodes in this series. It's already the longest running tutorial series in the history of this channel. So definitely subscribe so you won't miss out on new episodes and I'll see you in the next video.